Hi chickens, I'm so sorry this episode of Card Slinger is overdue and I am aware that there is a little bit of overexposure happening here and that I'm a little bit, little bit washed out by the light um, but I really liked this camera setting, I thought it looked really cool so I just kept it <laughs> with the other camera settings, with my normal camera setting it's a little bit underexposed so I thought sod it i'll look like i'm bathing in angelic glow i have been terrible 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 i'm so so sorry i wanted to make this episode of card slinger much sooner and i do not usually apologize for being you know for taking my time with my videos or for disappearing for a few weeks it's not normally my style to say sorry but the reason i'm apologizing is because so many people commented underneath the 78 cards opening and first impressions video wanting to enter the giveaway and get a chance to win the deck and the book and i did say that I would be announcing the winner in my next card slinger video and then it kind of never really happened in a few weeks down the line here we finally are so to apologize for being so desperately late with this I am going to not only announce the winner here of the deck and the book but I'm also going to be giving one other deck away as somewhat of, an, of, of a sorry <laughs> for being so late with this so underneath me right now you will magically by the power of technology be able to see the name of the person who won the deck and the book well done to you person whoever you are i'm doing the drawing after this so i don't know either um, but i will be messaging you via youtube to let you know um, what's next and, and how to proceed and now also by the power of technology i will be showing you a second name underneath me at this point and that is the name of the additional person who has won a 78 cards deck Deck. well done to you too and um, the name of the 78 cards deck is now officially changing to the eight coins tarot which is really cool so exciting um, and I think that's a really I think that's a much more it's a name befitting such a stylized deck that's had so much of an impact so fast I think before we proceed darlings I think we need just a touch of nag you know I definitely I need to be I need to be inhaling something oh I never get bored of that scent it never gets old does it my matron certainly doesn't think so anyway it is her jam nag champa is her jam <sighs> that's better that's gorgeous for this episode of card slinger i want to begin by talking about reversals um i want to start by saying that i have read reversals for a really long time i can't remember when i officially began to read reversals but it was years ago you know i think it would have been around the age of 21 or 22 you know and i'm 31 now so um, it's been a very long time I've read reversals and it's always been something that I felt comes really naturally to me um, and something that just makes total sense and gives the spread that I'm doing so many more chances to be dynamic and it gives me so many more interesting avenues to go down and I've always felt like reversals give full Technicolor to a reading and just offer me so much more scope for exploration and for opportunities to aid the client. So even though I'm aware that a great many people don't use reversals, and I think that's totally fine, and it's not as if I find it important that somebody reads reversals when they read for me, I think it's a very personal choice. It's something that I have personally always been very drawn to. I've always read reversals, and I never ever thought that that would change for me. It recently changed for me. I don't know what the fuck happened. I, I really can't explain it, but, it was about, I guess it must have been about a month ago or maybe five weeks ago, I just got this very strong sense that I just wasn't going to read reversals anymore. It just wasn't for me anymore. It didn't make sense anymore. And I, I can't for the life of me explain where that came from. I just went from seeing reversals as something that made all the sense in the world and something that I really enjoyed using in my readings to the total opposite end of the spectrum. I started to feel like it was just... It was adding confusion to things, it wasn't strictly necessary, it didn't feel comfortable to me anymore, you know? It was like a dress that didn't quite fit anymore and I kept trying to put it on, but all I wanted to do um, when I was doing readings was just turn the cards right ways up, you know? I just had this feeling that the reversals just were not necessary, they were surplus to the requirements of the reading, they were just a superfluous um, kind of flourish that I could just as easily do without. I've actually been doing video readings over the past four or five weeks. Um, I can't tell you exactly when I actually made this change 
officially for my clientele but it was definitely over the last few weeks and since then I've done quite a few video readings and email readings for clients who um, are regulars of mine and I've had to actually say you know just just as a disclaimer <laughs> since the last time you had a reading with me I don't know why I can't explain the intricacies of it but I've just decided that I don't want to read reversals anymore so that's why you're not seeing any reversals. I would love to know, I would absolutely love to know what you guys think about reversals, what are your thoughts on reversals, have you ever tried to read with reversals, do you read really comfortably with them or did you choose right at the beginning of your studies not to bother with them? I know reversals really really bug some readers, you know, they just don't understand it and I know that other people just wouldn't be able to live with the practice of tarot without reversals, they're just absolutely you know, click with them. So I would be really interested to get that particular discussion going. I know that in the time that I've been in the online tarot community, which is which is quite a bit of time now, um, I have seen certain blog posts and certain videos where people have been discussing reversals and how they don't use reversals. And some of the things that those people have said about the nature of using reversals has really kind of gotten up my nose a little bit because I feel like the way that people who don't read reversals sometimes understand reversals is actually a misunderstanding. Um, it, it's not an accurate portrayal of the reasons why we use reversals and the reasons why people choose to include reversals. For instance, I see some people saying things like, um, I don't need a reversal of a card to tell me, um, you know, that the message of the card is more of a warning element or more of a negative element, you know, or more of a kind of no as opposed to a yes. That's the kind of thing that I can determine myself. I don't need the card to be reversed to explicitly tell me that. And that's one of the attitudes that really used to bug me because that's not what reversals are for. Reversals are not there to tell a reader, oh, this means that they should do the opposite of what the card says, or this means that whatever is attributed to this card is negative or is a warning element. It's it's not as straightforward as that, it's not as mechanistic as that by any means. Actually reversals don't tend to simplify anything, that's not what reversals do, they just deepen the scope for exploration and that's why a lot of people use them. And they can mean different things. I will link below to the reversals video that I did for the trainee tarot course that I uploaded to YouTube many moons ago. I know that a lot of you are uh, trainee tarot alumni so I will link below to that video where I explain a few different ways in which you can actually read reversals and understand reversals and reversals are not supposed to be just a mechanistic flipping over of the upright meaning nor are they supposed to tell a reader that um, a card is specifically negative or is specifically a warning card. It really doesn't work like that. So yeah, stopped reading reversals. Not really sure why. I just, I just felt like for some reason I came to a point in my in my kind of uh, life as a reader where reversals quickly seemed to be a little bit too flowery for me. They just over-complicated and kind of over-seasoned the stew, which was already very hearty and which didn't really need, like I said, that that flourish that, that kind of came to feel superfluous to me. So I really don't know why that happened exactly. All I can tell you is that it did not feel right anymore. Reversals did not feel right anymore. There are a lot of different decks that I work with and uh, obviously I don't have the time nor do I have the inclination to go through every single one of them and turn all the cards to the upright position. So I'm just slowly doing that now as I do readings for clients. Just every time I flip one over and it's reversed I just turn it right ways up and then of course I do explain to clients quite often if they are regulars of mine that I'm no longer using reversals and it's no longer a part of my practice. One thing that I also wanted to get your opinion on, guys, is um, the practice of taking certain cards out of a deck because you because you don't resonate with them. I was speaking a little while ago to an amazing, amazing woman, Katrina Clark, from Phoenix Rising and Cosmic Blue Tarot, and she's just an amazing, amazing woman. I just on so many levels, I just really admire her. And we were talking about Osho Zen Tarot, and I told her that I have removed one of the cards from Osho Zen Tarot. I removed it right at the beginning of my Osho Zen Tarot experience, pretty much as soon as I got the deck home and flipped through it. There was this one particular card that I removed from the deck, and I knew that I did not want to read with that card in the deck. And it's the first and only time that I've ever done this. It's the first and only time that I've ever taken a card out of a, a tarot oracle deck but for me the card just did not resonate at all I did not agree with it 
I understood the message it was attempting to convey, but I didn't appreciate the way that, you know, the message was being conveyed. And the card was schizophrenia. Now, I'm sure you can imagine without having to have it explained to you why I felt that using the word schizophrenia was inappropriate. I don't think I really need to go into that, you know, I think anybody with an ounce of emotional intelligence would be able to understand my reasoning. I'm not saying that everybody should remove the schizophrenia card from their Osho Zen tarot deck and far be it from me to actually dictate to other people like that whatsoever um, but I know personally if I was getting a reading from somebody else and um, one of the cards that came up was schizophrenia I would have a problem with that we know what schizophrenia is we know what paranoid schizophrenia is and that word cannot be swapped out for some other adjective that means like you know experiencing a state of inner conflict or experiencing a state of, of madness or a state of confusion about selfhood you know you cannot use the word schizophrenia for that I would love to know if anybody out there has had an experience of actually removing a card from a deck for a similar kind of reason um, and I'd also be really interested in hearing counter arguments you know I'm, I'm interested in hearing from anybody who thinks it's maybe not appropriate or not right to do that um, and maybe works more with the idea that a deck has to work in its entirety as a holistic system or not at all. Now I must admit that removing the schizophrenia card from the Osho Zen tarot deck was relatively easy for me to do because even though the deck does follow a very tarot like structure and it is inspired by tarot it is in many many ways is obviously not a tarot deck it's its own animal in a lot of ways you know and it doesn't have the same kind of names that are in tarot and it doesn't approach the four elements in the same way it doesn't have the same symbolism whatsoever as a standard tarot deck so it was easier for me to go ahead and just pluck out the schizophrenia card and say you know what that gives me bad juju there's something very ungroovy in the woodshed there I do not like that card I don't want it to be a part of the deck it would not be easy for me to do that with an actual standard traditional tarot deck nor would I do that with a standard traditional tarot deck. If a tarot deck came into my possession and I was flicking through it and one of the cards seriously did not resonate with me and I was just like whoa Nelly that is not what it is about you know I am not really feeling this card there is no way with a traditional tarot deck that I would feel right to just pluck that card out and say oh you know what we won't have a five of cups then or we just won't have a judgment card then um, I must admit that with the Osho Zen situation it was much easier to just get rid of a card because I think of Osho Zen tarot as being like an oracle deck to be frank I don't think of it as a traditional tarot deck so in the more traditional 78 cards standard tarot deck standard symbolism I would not feel right about removing a card. I would be far more inclined to either try and reframe my relationship with that card or just move on and not use the deck and give it away to somebody else. Moving on from that, I've been thinking lately about the fact that I use both Oracle and Tarot decks for my clients. And I go through these... <laughs> Thank you, chorus girls. Appreciate that. Rolling, take two action. Okay, uh, so I was thinking about Oracle and Tarot decks and how I use both for my clients and I was thinking about how I go through phases. So like for a while at the kind of looking at the tail end of 2015, I reckon like the middle of 2015 to the tail end of 2015, I was really really like Oracle centric. I wasn't picking up tarot decks very much at all and I think that these big oracle phases fell throughout 2015 if I'm going to be completely honest. There would be times where I just felt very very moved to use um, the Vintage Wisdom Oracle or Psychic Tarot Oracle for the Heart or Earth Magic Oracle. At this moment in time I'm going through another massive tarot phase, I'm very tarot centric. Yesterday I actually used an oracle deck for a client and then I used it for another client and then I realised it was going to be more of a oracle kind of day and you know the messages from the clients the notes that that they had offered me just really seemed to link up with oracle decks rather than tarot decks and that was what brought me to thinking that I would want to discuss this in a card slinger episode because uh, that hasn't happened a lot for me lately, you know, it's really been a very tarot centric 2016 for me and uh, it was really interesting to note that yesterday I did feel like there were a few clients that really could match up with the energy more of one of my oracle decks, that was really interesting. Over on my site, um, when you go through the reading purchase options, at the end of every single purchase options description you will see a little thing that says that I recommend that you read my policies and ethics page before purchasing from me and the policies and ethics page just basically 
basically takes you through what my principles and my guidelines are that I work with for my readings, what kinds of readings I offer, and then also just the terms and conditions, like how long you'll need to wait to get your reading, um, what to do about refunds, that kind of thing. On my policies and ethics page, I do explain that I work with Oracle as well as Tarot, and that is one of the reasons that I call my purchase options readings as opposed to tarot readings, because I actually could be doing the reading with an Oracle deck as opposed to a tarot deck. But I do give clients the option to let me know in their notes that they would prefer that I use a traditional tarot deck. And that is never an issue for me, you know, I will always use a traditional deck if a client requests that. But if they don't, then that is that is kind of like, um, that's a permission slip for me to use an Oracle deck if I feel that an Oracle deck would be more appropriate. For me, it's important to be able to have that freedom to use an Oracle deck um, if I should so choose. Like I said, I've got no issue with the occasional client asking me to please use a tarot deck. That isn't a problem and if it was a problem I wouldn't offer it to clients, you know. But I do really want clients to have a tarot reading if it's a tarot reading that they want and that isn't an issue. Um, but for me the fact that so many clients are willing to trust me to select a deck that works for them is kind of cool because I really am very close to some of my oracle decks as well and sometimes it is an oracle deck that just really instinctively calls to me for a client if they have given me the option um, of selecting an oracle deck you know sometimes it will be an oracle deck that I go for but like I said 2016 has not really been all that oracle centric for me it's really been very sort of like tarot tarot centered this year I wanted to mention an interview that's only just gone up on my blog and it's an interview with the amazing Nora Husker who is the creator of the Gypsy Palace Tarot and she is now um, running an Indiegogo campaign to get her new deck the Starlight Dragon Tarot funded and it looks so cool i know she's got loads of backers already i've checked out the campaign it looks amazing i am very very excited about this campaign and i'm excited about some of the um the accessories that come along with the deck like the t-shirts and the jewelry and stuff um it's really cool so uh, because the the deck the starlight dragon tarot is so markedly different from what she did with gypsy palace i really wanted to check in with her and uh, and just pick her brain and ask her like how did this happen, you know? Because if you look at those two decks side by side, they're just so completely different. Um, and they just have a completely different vibe. You would never guess that they were by the same artist. So that's something really exciting. And the thing that I like about Starlight Dragon Tarot is that it is, it's kind of along the same vein as some of these other decks that are coming out now that are not focused on human imagery and human figures and are much more focused on things like color, symmetry, patterns, you know, symbolism. And that really does something for me. That really excites me. So yeah, pop over to the blog and have a look at the interview and check out the Indiegogo campaign. I'm going to leave the link down below to the interview so you can check that out. I am personally particularly thrilled right now by the idea of decks coming into vogue that are not focused on human imagery and are more focused, like I said, on patterns and... Um, and symbolism and you know other ways of connecting us to the archetypal meanings of the cards without using figures and without using landscapes. I really love that. There's something really heady about that. There's something really trippy about that. And as you guys know, I'm really into Orbifold Tarot for that exact reason. And uh, I blogged about Orbifold Tarot. It was my deck of the month tarot deck a few months ago. So I will leave that blog post below if you haven't had a chance to check it out. Um, and I have to let you know right now, very, very excited to announce the new edition of Orbifold Tarot is in my hot sticky hands and I will be doing an unboxing and first impressions and also an overall review of Orbifold so this box looks very very sumptuous and I'm super excited I know that the new edition has borders so I'm excited to see uh, what Michael's been able to do with that and I cannot believe that I received this quite a few days ago now and I've been a very very good little soldier and not opened it however I did also receive the mini version <laughs> which um which i'm really excited about and i'm going to be opening this now on camera because i'm really sorry guys i cannot wait any longer i'm an orb fold nut and i just i can't i can't wait anymore i can't believe i finally get to open this oh it's adorable oh god look <laughs> oh look at this box oh 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 Oh, it's like chocolates. <laughs> Welcome to the Orbifold Tarot. Don't mind if I fucking do. Oh, I'm so excited. Meditate upon oneness, twoness, etc. Seeing how they are expressed interiorly and exteriorly. 
Oh, Michael, you're speaking my language, babe. Explore the chaotic patterns and rhythms of life's endlessly changing cycles. That is what I do on the daily, and I just know that this deck is gonna do nothing but aid me in that journey. Oh, look, when you take all the cards out, it's got this little thing inside that says, wisdom resides within all. I love that, I love that. That's just giving me shivers. Wow, the borders add a completely different dimension to the deck. This is utterly gorgeous. I didn't expect the, the borders to be like that, like as vivid as they are, and they really accent the cards so well. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely lovely. Look how adorable these little cards are though. Mini. I'm so excited to have a mini version. I'm really, really into mini tarot decks, like as a concept at the moment. That's really becoming more of a thing for me. I almost ordered the mini Radiant Rider Waite the other day, but then I didn't, I held off on it. Um, but the reason that I kind of got into mini tarot decks was because the gorgeous and awesome Madame Jean Quill actually broke my cherry when she sent me this, a mini Morgan Greer. And I was like, oh my God, this is gorgeous. Look how pretty this is, and I've been carrying this around in my bag. I've been reading uh, for clients with it, but I've been carrying it around in my bag as well. And it's absolutely just so inoffensive. It's so light, it's so small. Um, it's just like, it's just inoffensively subtle. It's like, it's not there. It's not like I'm lugging around a massive, you know, a brick. It's just really, it's just lovely. There's something really delicate about it. And I love this little tin that it comes with. So yeah, I'm, I'm so, so happy to have a copy of the Morgan Greer. It's been on my wish list for the longest time. And it really made me think to myself, you know, mini decks are awesome. They're really awesome. They're awesome for traveling and they've just got a really cute feel to them. I've started giving, I've started putting photographs of the spread into all of my email tarot readings now. And Morgan Greer is actually pretty good for the email um, spreads. If they're, if they're large spreads, you know, um, then it's really good to have Morgan Greer because you can fit it all in the picture as well. So there's so many practical as well as sentimental reasons to have a mini deck. So yeah, this, uh, this mini Orbifold is the second of my mini decks and I reckon it's gonna become a thing for me, I think. Because um, I've got teeny little hands anyway. Look, look at this cute little mininess. Oh, so cute, it's just adorable. My first girlfriend when I was, I got with her when I was 15 years old. Oh gosh, she was gorgeous. Put my heart in a blender and hit frappe though. Um, but yeah, she, she used to be really into mini things. She was really, she loved like going and looking at doll's house furniture and stuff and like just, just the mininess. She just loved it, like the mini food and the little mini books with individual pages and shit. She just loved that so much. By the way, Madame Jean Quill has a tarot channel and you need to be following her tarot channel. She is fucking adorable. Something is coming your way very soon, babe to get ready, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm winging my way to you in the post, darling. I'm gonna admit, I have actually, I have actually made some original pieces of art that I'm sending to people that have sent stuff to my PO box. Um, so that's been really cool. That's got nothing to do with tarot, but that's, that's been really exciting to do. It's nothing like amazing. It's just like one of a kind collage goodness, you know? And handwritten letters, oh my God. I just love sitting at my coffee table writing handwritten letters just feels magical. Again, this has nothing to do with tarot and oracle. Let's move swiftly on. I have a few unboxing and first impression videos to do, which I'm so, so lucky to be able to do them. Um, I've got the um, Orbifold Tarot to do an unboxing and first impressions, and then I'm gonna be doing a more in-depth review of how I use it, my feelings about it, and so on. Um, if you are interested in Orbifold, by the way, as well as my blog post down below, I'm also going to leave the most recent video that Michael has done um, to kind of explain the deck and go into, into the kind of depths of, of its meaning and how it can be used. It's a head fuck okay that's the way I see Orbifold you're either in or you're out okay but if you're in and you want to buy the ticket and take the ride it is a rabbit hole so you've got to get ready I've got another deck coming that I'm really excited about it's connected to a person on YouTube who's amazing who created it and I'm like 110% excited about getting my hands on it and checking it out I've been talking with Dustin from Kelleborn Dark Flame about Marielle Tarot and Motherpiece and Paulina and <laughs> just kind of like yeah doing a bit of tarot talking and uh, he sent me the Motherpiece tarot deck to open and uh, check out and I just, 
love him for that and I want to squish his face a little bit <laughs> I'll leave his channel below I have really struggled not to open the mother piece deck L literally as soon as as soon as Dustin sent it to me I was like sitting on my hands I was sweating it was like you know I was like a crack addict looking at literally the last piece of crack in a pipe on the table in the world and I was just like oh fuck I really want that <laughs> but I've done really really well because I really want to make an unboxing and first impressions and I'm not ready to add any new decks into my actual sort of conscious working collection at the moment um, I'm not ready to consider uh, new symbolism at the moment particularly not symbolism that is so incredibly like steeped in in its own thing you know and existing in its own world so I'm gonna do that very much like um, when I'm ready kind of thing Finally, I wanted to talk about something today that I originally spoke about quite a few months ago on Periscope and I got into this big thing about it and other people kind of chimed in and said that they did feel like it was an important thing to talk about. Can we talk about the fact that there is still an overwhelming lack of race diversity in tarot and oracle decks? Because that is something that has been bothering me for a really long time now. I want to begin this by saying that I am completely aware that another white voice is not what we need on this issue. My intention is to use my platform to open up this dialogue and to start having this conversation so that we as purchasers of tarot and oracle decks can let creators and publishing houses know that we find the lack of race diversity um, in decks to be disturbing and perturbing and unsettling and just all round yucky. Um, but I do not feel like myself as a white woman should be kind of like leading the charge and being up at the helm or anything I'm just using my platform to get the discussion going I would far rather you know set up the stage and then hand the mic to some people of color who are part of the tarot and oracle world so that they can speak to us about the way that they think and feel about it which I think is far more important I can never fully know what it is like to have invested myself in the tool of tarot for many many years and to have purchased untold amounts of decks and spent lots of my my hard earned money on decks only to flip through them and time and time and time and time and time and time again see that I am not represented in them. I don't know what that's like, okay? In case anybody hasn't noticed or gotten the memo, I'm white as fuck. <laughs> so I cannot I cannot know what that feels like, but I can I can surely imagine and I have slowly and steadily been trying to imagine more and more um, and it's pissing me off. And not only does it piss me off when I imagine not being represented time and time again in the figures in tarot but it also pisses me off that I'm not being given any diversity, you know, as though as a white person I would not want it, I would not push for it, I would not desire to have racial diversity in my tarot and oracle decks. I think it's important that we open up this discussion and I am not about shaming particular creators or particular publishing houses, I am not about listing the decks that don't include racial diversity, that don't include people of colour, because frankly if I was about listing them I'd be here all fucking night, you know, I could go for hours. Hours. So I don't think it's necessarily about naming and shaming, I think it's more about opening up the discussion so that we, as the people who spend the money and keep the fucking industry going, can let the creators and the publishing houses and everybody else involved know that this is not good enough anymore. This is not good enough anymore, this is not the 1950s or the 1960s. There's way too much whiteness, I'm, I'm really tired of the whiteness. Get at me in the comments below about your thoughts and feelings on this particular thing, um, there's a hashtag hashtag on Twitter, I'm trying to make it happen, it's hashtag tarot so white, <laughs> like a, a little bit of a cheeky play on Oscars so white. If you have thoughts, you know, if you agree, if you have ideas about how you think we can begin to bring more racial diversity into tarot or open up that dialogue, please hit me up on Twitter. I would love to be able to see that the hashtag is doing its thing and people are getting involved and um, speaking up about this because I'm still just seeing that the overwhelming amount of decks that I see, that I covet, that I watch reviewed that I get my hands on in any way um, all of the figures are white there are very 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 few people of color and the other thing that I think is concerning is that sometimes when there are people of color included particularly black women I feel that there is an exotification I feel that there is a fetishization and I don't feel like there is a conscious understanding of the fact that it's okay to have people of color um, black women in particular but all people of color it's okay to have them doing ordinary things in ordinary settings like other figures in the tarot there's no need to make a big deal 
pull out of you know the Nubian queen stereotype for example this is something that I see that I I also find troubling and challenging is that when we do bring people of color into the equation we have to think seriously about the way that that is set up and the way that that looks and the way that it looks in relation to the white figures in the deck I do think that there is some problematic imagery even when people of color are included that's what I'm kind of like cack handedly trying to say I want to end this episode of card slinger by putting a call out particularly to people of color who have YouTube channels or blogs that talk about tarot and oracle in any way I would love 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 to know your opinion on this if you are interested in making a video and you're interested in writing a blog post and you are a person of color please please hit me up in the comments below or send me an email at mail at kellyannemaddox.com um, let me know what you've done and let me link it underneath this video so that we can get a little bit of an index going of the perspectives of people of color who are tarot and oracle readers professionally or in any other way collectors enthusiasts you know or maybe you're even creating a deck or you have created a deck and you're a person of color I want to know what you have to say about it you know I don't think another white voice is, is really what we need I'm just trying to open the discussion up and then you know I'd really love it if people of color would take the mic and just let us know what your views are what your gripes are what you're concerned about so yeah that's it that's uh, that's all I've got to say on that and this has been another episode of card slinger I have loved it I hope you've loved it too congrats to the people that won the 78 cards tarot decks and until next time much love blessed be